So here we're going to have a listen to two gongs and explore the upper frequency ranges of both gongs. We have a 34-inch symphonic gong and a 32-inch accent gong. And in examining these instruments, we found that, generally speaking, the louder portions produced more interesting sounds in the upper range and more power and more energy in the upper range than uh, the quiet bits, save for maybe the parts with a compression mallet. So let's get right into it and listen to this gong, this 34-inch symphonic gong. We'll listen to the whole file first, and then I'll highlight some different bands of activity, and we can listen to those individually. Okay, so first we'll listen to this kind of central band of, of harmonics um, in between about 700 and uh, uh, 1,700 hertz. So very busy, pretty steady through that build up there. Didn't change much. Lots of activity. And now we'll move up. There's another smaller band of, uh, of harmonics here. We'll take a listen to these alone. Pulsating similar to the previous example, but a little quieter, a little bit of kind of washy sound in there too. And we'll move up again to the next band of activity right here. And this is where it gets less about kind of um, pulsating harmonics and more about wash. And you can hear that's the part that really activates during that loud portion. And lastly, we'll move up to the upper highest range where at first we'll just maybe barely hear some mallet hits. And then during the peak, you'll hear um, some very distant wash. Very faint, I should say. Almost as if there's like a little bit of uh, you know, static, high frequency static coming through. So that is all the bands of the 34 inch symphonic gong. And now that we've listened to these different bands in the 34 inch gong, let's keep those frequencies in our mind's ear and listen back to the full sound again. to the 32-inch accent gong, which has a slightly different uh, quality to it. Let's listen to it full.
Okay, now we'll highlight a uh, band of harmonics. This is a little lower than before, 450 hertz to 1000 hertz. This is where you get that kind of similar warbling as to uh, the symphonic gong. Another band here. Some longer pitches in here compared to the symphonic gong. There's this kind of wash and this warble, but also some long stretched out tones. It's more pitched in a sense than the symphonic gong. Here we have uh, the wash, similar again to the symphonic gong, but a little lower in frequency. And some tones ringing out. In this example, you can really hear the, the sound of the mallet hits too, um, most likely because it's a quieter instrument overall or, or a quieter excerpt so you you hear you pick up the mallets a little bit more easily an exact example you could hear the mallet strikes at the beginning and then a little bit of wash um, similar to the previous example in the symphonic gong but nothing quite as uh, powerful or as high frequency as, as that example. Now that we've heard the bands of the accent gong, let's do the same thing we did with the symphonic gong. Let's listen back to the full recording and see how that sounds with a new perspective. By doing this exercise, I really feel like I've gained a new appreciation for gongs and for their complexity. And I hope that taking a look at these different frequency bands and the high frequencies gives new perspectives for people to uh, apply to their listening. If you're a player or if you're someone who's using gongs to meditate, I think that listening in this way can give you a new perspective and a new doorway to awareness of sound and awareness of how gongs vibrate. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time.